T-U-R-T-L-E, pow. New Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles trailer dropped today. I'm very excited, it looks amazing, but one or two little areas that give me a little caution. Let's talk about all of it, but first, this is uncomfortable, so this has to. I'm super excited about this movie. It looks like a ton of fun. It reminds me of when I was a kid. When I was a kid, you either had imaginary fights on the playground against the putties or the foot. And for me, we had a lot of crossover episodes, it was both. Let's get the obvious thing out of the way. The animation on this looks absolutely incredible. Obviously, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse changed the game on animation. Everybody is starting to do this. Maybe in 10 years, we're gonna get tired of it. But for right now, I cannot get enough of this style, this stylized, this different frame rate, this like, you don't know if it's animation or watercolor or graffiti, like it just looks incredible. I love Spider-Verse, I wanna see the sequel, I love Puss in Boots 2. This movie is gonna scratch that animation itch. One thing that's setting this movie apart, and this is a little bit of a theme, and I feel like they really played on this a lot, and I'm super excited to see where they went with it, is that everything is very teenage. And that, I think, includes the animation. Like there are a lot of the parts where the text doesn't look super clean, like really professional, like the text looks like something a teenage boy might draw, or sometimes some of the animation looks a little scribbly, a little squiggled. It has that learning how to do art feel. And I think they really continue the teenage boy theme too into the characters themselves. So a lot of people are pointing out, this is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles where the turtles really do feel like teenagers. These feel like 13 year old boys, not 18 year old boys. Like we usually have a more mature, uh, Ninja Turtles, they're obviously more for the combat, they're fighting the bad guys. These are uh, younger turtles that clearly don't know what they're doing. I think it looks like in the movie they're gonna be like fighting crime for the very first time. They're obviously learning how to do it, but it looks like they're having a really great time together. And it just looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. The characters look like they're having fun, the voice actors sound like they're having fun, and I think it's gonna make us, the audience, have a lot of fun. I like this fresh take on it. You know, something with the Peter Pan and Wendy trailer that just came out, a lot of people were pointing out that this is just, it's another lazy remake. It's the identical thing. I, th I had a lot of people uh, in my comments talking about how like, Hook was different because they took a different approach. Like, what if Peter Pan got old and forgot he was Peter Pan? Let's play on that. Let's see where that goes. Whenever people take an old property and they bring a new idea or a new spin to it, I love that. Just telling the same old thing, but going, hey, the cameras are better. The CGI is better now. That doesn't make the story good. They're taking this new approach. Hey, what if they really were teenagers? What if they were like 12, 13 year old boys? What if one of them obviously hasn't even gone through puberty and still has a higher voice than the other ones and they're awkward and goofy and they're just goofing off with their buddies doing dumb shit like throwing a ninja star into a watermelon that's right over their buddy's head and they don't even take into account how fucking dangerous that is because they're stupid boys. Usually adults don't write kids very well, but this feels authentic. I remember being a 13 year old boy. I used to work in youth ministry. I've taught 13 year old boys. This feels accurate to their goofy ADD dumb asses. So overall, the trailer just shows us a little bit of them hanging out, filming themselves doing some dumb shit. We see a little bit of them trying to fight crime like for the first time and the criminals don't even know who they are. It looks like the scene at the end where Donatello gets stabbed in the leg and he's screaming like that looks like it's in the same room as where they first meet those first criminals. So it looks like that was their first try and obviously things are going wrong and hijinks ensue and I think it's gonna be great, but it doesn't look perfect. And I am not being pessimistic yet, but there are a few areas that I'm gonna watch closely and I feel a little cautious about. The number one thing that I'm worried about is Seth Rogen. He's real hit or miss. Sometimes he tries to be a little too zany, a little too edgy. A combination of his style of humor and the accurate portrayal of 13 year old boys might get really old by the end of a two hour runtime. Like I said, I have taught teenagers they can get annoying kind of quickly. Like there's the scene at the end of the trailer where April's asking them questions, she uses the word goo, and they're like, oh, we don't like the word goo, we like the word ooze, and they all start saying the word ooze. 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 It's nice, right? Ooze. It's ooze. That goes on for a minute. Those are the kind of jokes that if not done properly, they get really old really fast. And this is just a personal preference. I think this is something with this movie, you kind of need to know your style of humor. Like Seth Rogen for me is right up there with Andy Samberg, Adam Sandler, Will Ferrell. Like, I think those guys are funny, 
for about a half an hour. A lot of times when I see a full length movie with one of those guys, by the end, I'm getting a little bored unless there are supporting characters. This is one of the reasons I like Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I think Andy Samberg is funny, but an entire half hour show of just his goofiness would be awful. He needs a supporting cast to kind of dilute him out a little bit. This movie I'm worried is gonna be two straight hours of Rogan jokes as told by teenage boys. It might get cringy toward the end. But then again, it might not, because I went and saw Teen Titans go to the movies with my kids, and there are a lot of really stupid fucking jokes. I mean, that movie's fucking dumb as hell, but I had a great time. I didn't get tired of it. They went back to a couple of jokes a few times, but they did it well. I thought it was funny, even though it was kind of mindless. Around my house, we still sometimes go, Slay. The last thing about Rogan is that sometimes he tries to do the edgy commentary thing, and I'm really worried he might be doing that in this. In a previous video, I was grabbing clips from Sausage Party to try to make some point. I had never actually seen that movie, but the clip I got was from like an opening musical number where he was trying to poke fun at organized religion. It came across as like an edgy 17 year old atheist, like really cool Reddit argument. We don't have a lot to go on with this trailer, but I'm seeing hints that he might be trying to do that. We have April, who has been race swapped to black body positive April. This might not affect the story in any way, but just the fact that they did it makes me worried that Rogan's gonna try to do the edgy social commentary thing. She was in the trailer for like three seconds. It might be absolutely nothing, but it always makes me worried when movies go that direction because it tells me what they think is important and it's not the story. So the trailer looks great overall. I'm very excited with just a few little bits of caution. Let me know what you think. See you guys next time.